महाप्रसाद अन्न प्रसन्नी विनियोग ओम अच्युत अन्न पति अन्न सनो दे ृजनादनो देवता कुमार कुमार महाप्रसाद जुगे न धे दिपदे चतुस्पदे स्वाहा ओम अपनाय स्वाहा प्रजापति विष्णु ऋषि छंद स्वाहा श्रीलक्ष्मीनारायण देवते कुमार महाप्रसाद प्रसन्न विनियोग ओं लक्ष्मीनारायण अन्न पति अन्न अमृत नो धे कमला संस्कृत ते भुक्त शेषम नो धे दिपदे चतुस्पदे स्वाहा उदाय ओम प्रजापति विष्णु ऋषि गाथी छंद जनार्दन देवता कुमार महाप्रसाद प्रसन्न विनियोग ओगणपते जनादनो सरसित निवेदित सदन देह नो दे दिपदे चतुस्पदे स्वाहाय स्वाहा Without this worldly wealth, reputations, sense gratifications, and so many things, they cannot give you happiness. Never, never, and never, never. And that is why Swami Ji came here, Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj, came here everywhere to give this message to whole world. After his departure, so many devotees became weak. No, so much a strong faith on him. No, a strong faith on name. That name is himself Krishna, and more merciful than Krishna even. Very powerful. They returned to their home to for sense gratification, to make wealth, reputation, to make so many businesses. Because they had no strong faith on them. That name can give you everything, even eternal bliss in Guru Vrindavan it can give. Why not these material things he can give? But it is hard, very hard to believe. We have seen by name Brahma is created. Brahma is creating whole universe. By the power of taking name, Shankar, oh, very marvelous thing. He can give any boon to anyone. No? Sukadev Goswami, Narad Goswami, Dyas, and others. Hmm? Even the Kanan the Prabhu Haridas Thakur hmm? changed so many lives. Like demons, like divine, madhai, and so many. What Swami did miracle in this world? 
changing so many persons, so countless. How? Only by the mercy of me, he gave me. Sitting in the park of New Jersey, what doing only closing eyes? Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare He changed the hearts of hippies and made them so many numberless. So you should have faith in me. But how it will come? The backbone of bhakti is Guru Nishtha. Without Guru, without Guru Nishtha and by his serving and by his teaching, following, you cannot have that kind of. So what is Guru Nishtha? With some explanation and udaharan Example. examples. Oh, Pandrik Brahmachari Vinod explain something. Not so much because time is not so much. I will have to complete today or just till seven thirty. Oh, my daughter, you should be what are you doing, how are you going? Tomorrow. First of all, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lotus Feet of Shri Guru Maharaj. And I offer proper respects to all the assembled Vaishnava devotees. <coughs> want that we should discuss and hear about the importance of Guru Nishtha. What is Guru Nishtha? Nishtha means faith, but not ordinary kind of faith or a belief. Here, Nishtha means strong, unflinching faith, determination. That's called Nishtha. For whom? For Guru. That's why Guru Nishtha. If we see in the life of all the great souls, those who have attained perfection in the past, we will see that each one of them, they followed in their life this principle very strictly. And by their own example, they showed us that regardless of one's material situation, eligibility, qualification, disqualification, etc., etc., if one takes seriously to the instructions of spiritual master, then in no time one attains perfection. This is the rule since the beginning of creation, that if any conditioned soul has to liberate his or herself from this material conditioned state of life, then the only hope is to hold the finger of that liberated soul, who is known as Guru. The word 
Guru has two letters, Gu and Ru. What does that mean? Gu means darkness or ignorance. And Ru means enlightenment, knowledge. So one who brings me or one out from that ignorance and brings me to the to the real essence of life, the reality, reality about one's own existence, reality about this world, this creation, the Supreme Lord, then this person is known as Guru. All the scriptures which we read, the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, Srimad Bhagavatam, especially because Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all the scriptures. All of these scriptures have been written by whom or manifested by in the recent time because Shastra is eternal. It has been manifested in recent time by Srila Vedavyas. Everyone accepts his authority on his scriptures. So what did he do? He composed Vedas and then he wrote down the essence of the Vedas in Vedanta Sutra. And then further he explained the essence of Vedas in Upanishads, Purans. He also composed Mahabharat. And after doing everything else, now until now, all these scriptures beginning from the Vedas, it includes every bit of knowledge required for anyone, for any subject matter in this material world. It contains in that. It has been categorized in four divisions. Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Dharma means religion. Artha means what one wants or in general sense we say economics. Kama means the desires in terms of enjoyment, what you want to experience in this world, what you want to have. And moksha, liberation. That's the highest goal one can think of, or most of the people in this world, they think of what they want. Even in India, if we go, we will see everyone, whether they know or not, their goal is they want moksha. Because that's the highest supreme attainable destination for living entity in their understanding. So Srila Vyasadeh has discussed in details about all these things in his scriptures, which I mentioned a while ago. But even after composing all that vast literature, Srila Vyasadeh himself was not satisfied. Surprising. Every information is given there. The way how one should live in this material world and one can be happy. But despite that, he himself is lacking something. He's searching for something. He's not fully satisfied. So in that despondent state and morose, Shilavyasate was sitting and thinking, what shall I do? And in the meantime, what happened? Shila Narada Muni. Who is he? The Guru of Srila Vyasadeva. He appeared at that point, at that place. And Srila Vyasadeva, he, with the deep affection of his heart, he properly honored, welcomed Sri Narada Muni. And after duly honoring him, giving him proper seat and welcome, he inquired the cause of his distress. But before that, because Guru is all-knowing, so Srila Narad Muni is knowing everything about Srila Vyasadeva. So he is inquiring before Vyasadeva want to ask something. Oh, you look not very happy. Why? You have done great work. No one can do like you. And still you feel you are not content. You are still looking for something. You are still searching for something. Why is that? And then humbly, 
Srila Vyasadeva is saying, I don't know. Why? Because I am the diseased. I am the patient. How can I know the cause of my disease? I don't know. You are a doctor. You know. Why I am suffering? Why I am not happy? Why despite doing, making all this endeavor and achieving so many things in my life, I am still unhappy? I don't know. So this is the first important point that we have to understand. This all information which we are going to hear, this is all included in Nishtha, Guru Nishtha. Just by hearing the word Guru Nishtha, we will not become Guru Nisht. There is a process. It's a, it's, a, yes, it's a process and it begins from scratch. It begins where one has no relationship, no information about anything. And then when one finds that important person in his life, one who will bring him to that eternal destination where he belongs to, he starts relating himself with that person. And then gradually, by properly communicating and making proper surrender, devoid of all other motivations, with pure sincerity, trying to execute the instructions of that spiritual master, he will come to that platform of Guru Nishtha, and then everything else will be revealed to him, not before that. So here, Srila Vyasadeva, how nicely and humbly he is acting, how a disciple should behave or act, how the, the relationship begins with the spiritual master. So, if we all or any one of us is feeling like that, similar like Vyasadeva in our life, that we need something, we are lacking something, so much we have tried in our life all those years, some are young, some are old, but despite that we have our plans and we have tried so many ways to be happy, but we are not. So what we should do? We should go and inquire about our state from the soul, from from the mouth of the spiritual master or guru. So when Vyasadeva submissively inquired from Narada Muni, then Sri Narada Muni said, Yes, you have done great work. You have written so many scriptures, in and that's in those scriptures you have given information that how different conditioned souls in different situations of life according to the Adhikar, different qualifications, what they should do, which de demigods and other worships they should do. And by doing so, what you did, somewhere you said, Oh, Ganesh, he is the source of everything. He is the Supreme God. And somewhere you said Lord Shiva. Somewhere you said God is Durga. Like that, you have confused the people. People cannot ascertain now in clarity that who is the supreme person, who is that supreme personality, who is controlling each one of us and each and every activity going on this in the material world. And how one can relate to that supreme Lord, you have not mentioned that. You haven't described the glories of Sri Prajendra Nanda Nishamsundar, the son of Nanda Maharaj in Braj. You haven't mentioned about his pastimes, his sweet pastimes, that how being Supreme Personality of Godhead, knowing everything, omnipotent, yet still, how he acts in Vrindavan? Just like a normal, ordinary person, human being, not knowing at all that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that he creates the material world or the spiritual world and everything that is there in the existence. With Mother Yashoda, he is having so many wonderful pastimes like a child. She controls him fully with his love, for her love and affection to be caressed by her. For to, to, he has a great deep desire to sit in her lamp, lap, to drink her breast milk. And if he doesn't get that, he becomes disturbed. You haven't mentioned these pastimes. You haven't mentioned how with love and affection she can even bind him. And she did that. She can scold him. She can twist his ear. And he cries. Can you imagine how does Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's having such wonderful love, loving exchange with his associates and you have given no description about that. You haven't mentioned how he plays with his cowherd boyfriends in the forest when he goes for cowherding. What to speak, he has such a nice relationship with even the cows, with all the animals. 
So sweet relationship. Cows will not give milk unless Krishna comes there. How beautiful and how wonderful. And you haven't mentioned that. And above all, the wonderful pastimes with his intimate gopis. Fully controlled by their love. You haven't given any information about that. So then, what happened? After hearing this information from Sri Narad Muni, what did Vyasadeva do? He took the instructions of his spiritual master in his heart. And soon after he left, Srila Vyasadeva sat down in deep meditation, following the path of Shuddha Bhakti. Bhakti Yogena Manasa Samyak Pranihite Amale Pashyat Puranam Purusha so, in this verse, it is described how Srila Vyasadeva, he sat down in meditation according to the method described by Narad Muni, exclusively with one pointed resolution, resolute determination, he was focusing with Shuddha Bhakti at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Bhakti Yoga, that is the process, the process of Shuddha Bhakti and unconditioned surrender. Like Sri Rupa Goswami has explained in the verse, Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Jnana Karamadya Navratam Anukulyena Krishna Anushilanam Bhakti Ruttama. This was the process, what Sri Rupa adopted. And then what, what happened? In his complete mature Samadhi, in his transcendental state of trance, what did he Visualize what did he saw? What did he experience? He saw those wonderful, beautiful transcendental pastimes of Sri Krishna with all the associates in Golok Vrindavan. All the pastimes like a chain. He saw everything. And then what did he saw? He saw all this material creation. And behind Krishna he saw that Maya Devi was standing a little bit away from Krishna and her face is bowed down. She is not feeling very happy. Why? Because she takes care of all the living entities who have come in this material world and who are conditioned. She takes the charge to purify them by giving them punishment. That's her duty. So she doesn't feel very happy about it that these living entities who are actually part and parcel of Krishna, who are meant to enjoy eternal bliss and that loving relationship with Krishna are suffering in this material world and that she has to uh, purify them or clean them of all that contamination of the material modes by punishing them. So when Srila Vyasadeva, he saw all these things by the mercy of Sri Narad Muni, then what did he do? He composed that transcendental jewel of Srimad Bhagavatam. And in that, what did he wrote? Ete chance kalam punsa Krishna stu Bhagavan swayam. That now, for sure you should know that all these manifestations, incarnations of the Lord which we see, Nirsinga, Vaman, Kalki, Ramachandra, so many incarnations, countless, innumerable, they are all what? They, were, they are all manifestations or expansions of expansions of expansions of Krishna. And Krishna is that supreme, original, supreme personality of Godhead from whom they are all coming. We should not have any doubt about it. But what is the formula to understand? We should not grade it like someone is inferior and someone is superior. This is not the idea. That is material idea. He gave the example of moon. Like on full moon day, what happens? We see the complete full disk. And the whole atmosphere and whole planet is flooded with wonderful moonshine. And then, other 15, uh, on, 15, uh, on every 15 days, what we see, the moon is waning and waxing. So, when we see moon very small, just like a small curve, very sliver, we saw, like, we saw like this, then what does it mean? Does it mean that moon is now only in that shape? It's not a complete full disk? No. 
every day the moon is growing. That means moon is growing and moon is decreasing. This is not the case. The reality is because of our position here in this material world. Every day we are seeing moon with a different shape, increasing or decreasing. But actually moon is complete like on the full moon day. Throughout, every time, eternally it's like that. So similarly, all the expansions and incarnations of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu Tattva, they are same like Krishna. No difference in potency. Tattvata means principally they are all absolute truth. But the only difference is of the pastimes. The sweetness or the Madhuri aspect of the Supreme Lord in which he has loving relationships with Jivas of different Adhikar. And according to the devotion of one devotee, the Lord manifests his beautiful form. So, the form of Sri Krishna as the son of Nanda Maharaj in Braj is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead or the complete manifestation of Godhood. That's the absolute form. It is complete in every respect and thus the living entities who have relationship with that form of the Lord, they are actually experiencing bliss to the complete degree. Nothing is left in that. Nothing is remaining. And also, what is another unique point about the pastimes of Sri Krishna? In any other incarnations, the Lord never manifests or He gives opportunity to the living entities that they can have relationship with Him just like an ordinary person in this material world. Like we have friend or we have lover and beloved. All this relationship with no other incarnation are possible. Even in the incarnations of Sri Ramachandra we don't see that. He only accepts Sita as his wife and no other lady can be his wife. But if anyone has that desire that one wants to be the consort of the Lord, then what he can do? He can worship the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and he will get this boon. He will get this desire fulfilled. So, when Sri Vyasadeva, he wrote this information in Srimad Bhagavatam, then he was satisfied. He felt that complete bliss because now he knew his own relationship with the Lord. And by giving, distributing this wonderful gift of love for everyone and giving that wonderful message, he, his joy was increasing. So, so many examples. Even in the example of Sri Narad Muni, we see yesterday also in the class we were hearing Guru Dev mention how Sri Narad Muni ji was so much attached to his gurus, the four Kumaras, and he strictly followed their instruction, chanted the mantra, and with no time he attained perfection. Furthermore, we see how Narad Muni gave initiation or mantra to Balmiki ji, to Dhruv Maharaj, to Prahlad, to Chitraketu Maharaj, to so many others, and each one of them attained perfection. But there was difference. There was difference of goal they all attained. So what does this mean? This means that not only having relationship with Gurudev is sufficient, but one has to continuously monitor and one has to carefully uh, watch that if one is performing that complete surrender or not. If we take the example of Dhruv Maharaj, he also accepted Guru, he also had Guru Nishtha. When Narad Muni gave him a mantra, he sat down and he chanted that mantra. But, what happened? There was something lacking in his complete surrender. That's why his bhakti is called as Sakam Bhakti. Why? Sakam means having some desire, having some, some desire for his own self, other than serving the Lord. Because when Narad Muni, he was giving him mantra, he tested him in every way. He, but uh, but through Maharaj, he was, he was understanding all the points of Narad Muni. And he said that, oh great sage, you are telling me everything for my well-being. But yet still, the pain in my heart to take revenge of that insults, of that dishonor from my father, I cannot forget it. So, you kindly help me so that I can fulfill my desire. But also, he was committed, he knew that he can only fulfill his desire only by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So this was a good point, 
And Narad Muni, being so merciful, great sage, he knew, okay, let me wave, let me give air to this small sparkle of bhakti in this living entity. And no sooner when he will perform the devotional service, the pure devotional service, automatically he will realize his true nature. That's why we see that person who is called Guru is not an ordinary person. He has that ability, he has that compassion that despite taking all the pain and despite tolerating all the uh, misbehaviors of, un of conditioned souls, he engages them in the devotional practice. And gradually he gives them that knowledge and brings them to that platform where they realize their true nature and they establish themselves in that relationship with the Lord. And that's what happened with Guru Maharaj. After properly chanting mantras, with strong devotion, strongly following, not lacking, oh, one day mind is cooperating, another day mind is not cooperating, so he's confused whether I should follow or it should not follow, or any bodily problems or disease or money problems or worldly problems. No. Completely. The day Narak Muni gave him this mantra, he sat down on that hill in, in Madhuban forest near Vrindavan and continuously followed the chanting of mantra following strong austerities. And in six months he realized his, uh, his goal. He was given darshans by the Supreme Lord. And then that, when that happened, what did he felt? He felt so much disappointment. Why? Because he had that desire to be wealthy, to be king. More powerful or wealthy king than his father. So that's why Supreme Lord said, you have performed so nice devotion, but because you had desire in your heart, so this must fulfill. And Guru Maharaj realized that actually he was looking for a broken piece of glass because all this material wealth or positions, what is it actually? It is really even more worse than a uh, broken glass. And what he found? He found real diamond. But now, because he had that desire, so Lord ordered him to rule this material world for a long period of time. And then after that, by the following of those uh, wonderful performance of bhakti, it was assured that he will definitely achieve his uh, eternal servitorship to the Supreme Lord. So similarly, in all the examples we see this, that the great souls have followed this path and they followed with strong devotion. They had no doubt in the words of their Guru. No doubts at all. And they served him with their life and soul. And we can also remember the acharyas in our parampara, Sri Shri Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Shri Shmad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur, all of them, they exemplified, they showed this path. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur, how he was so qualified and he was such a big scholar. And yet, when he came to take the shelter of Shri Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, what happened? What did we see? Shri Babaji Maharaj, so humble he was that he refused to give mantra to Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Satvari Thakur, saying that, oh, you're so, you're so qualified, I know nothing, so how can I give you mantra? But what did Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Satvari Thakur did? He, he took his life in his hand, humbly and committed that if I don't get this mercy from you, there's no hope for me in this world. There's no meaning to my life. I'll give up my life. He was refused twice, refused twice. And then on the request of Srila Bhakti Nur Thakur, and actually Srila Gokshur Das Babaji Maharaj was inspired by Sri Gaurachandra and Sri Nityanand Prabhu. And then he gave the mantra to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Satpuri Thakur. Here, this is also very important to see the other aspect I want to mention about Ekalavya. We also hear about Ekalavya so much as one of the ideal disciples of any guru, especially in specific Srila Dronacharya. So many people regard him and they give example also that, oh, we should become disciples like Ekalavya. But there's a big mistake here. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur has given uh, uh, the, the true aspect of his nature in his article about him. And he underlines the fact that actually who he was, he was a complete demon and that's why he was killed by the hands of Krishna. If he was a pure devotee, if he was a Vaishnava, why he ended up like that? Why he got that fate? 
Krishna never kills his devotees, he only kills demons. So by this we can understand that he was not a pure devotee. Furthermore, if we closely watch, then what happens? He comes to Sri Dronacharya and then he requests him for to educate him in the knowledge of archery. And what did Sri Dronacharya did? He refused him, no, I cannot teach you. Then what did he do? Did he follow the example like I just mentioned about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Satvari Thakur or Srila Narottam Thakur that when they were refused then they did not show their ego but Ekalavya what did he do? What did he do? Oh, okay. If you don't give him a... Uh, uh, if you don't educate me, if you don't accept me as your disciple doesn't matter. Within his heart he's thinking like that. And then he went and he made uh, a statue of Sri Dronacharya and he started uh, learning the art of archery. So what is this? This is not Guru Bhakti. Why? Because he is not following the instruction of his Guru. If his Guru is saying no, then that means he should accept it. It would have been that Dronacharya was testing him, let me see. But he did not took that as a test. He did not try to follow at all or try to see, oh what my Guru Dev is wanting from me. Yet, with his own strong uh, inspirations, he said, okay, I can do on myself. So it was a display of false egoism. And then, when later we see how he, uh, uh, Pandavas, when they came to forest and they, uh, they, they took note that how Ekalavya was becoming so expert in archery and the matter was reported to Dronacharya and when Sri Dronacharya again came to him and he said, Oh, who is your guru? And then he said, You are my guru because I am taking all the inspiration from you. So, Dronacharya he knows everything because he is not simply a, an expert archer. He knows, he's also a devotee, he knows all the truths. So, he knew that this person 